everyone. Happy Saturday, everybody. We all know the drill. If you have a question, raise your hand and we can get going. And we will start with Antonio. Hey, Lincoln. Uh, I was just curious about uh, Deuce Robinson, obviously. You know, as he's a talented pass catcher, but and listed as a tight end. But what position do you foresee him playing uh, once he gets to you guys? Uh, you know, some of that will, will be you know, getting him here. Um, you know, kind of finishing our evaluations of the players that are here this spring. Obviously, getting him and and uh, Jacoby here, and anybody else. That, that becomes a part of that room uh kind of seeing what the you know what what the overall skill looks like and then and then trying to find the place where you know we feel like he can come in and give us the best, best advantages and make the biggest impact um you know I, I certainly don't see him um uh, as a tight end i mean I, I he's a guy you could i think conceivably do a lot of things with which has been our excitement in, in recruiting him from i mean he was a you know, I've known Deuce for almost four years. I, mean, I was a three and a half year recruitment. Um, and so got to know him very well. We've got to see his body really evolve and change a lot uh, from day one. And he's really kind of leaned out, um, his running, you know, he's just gotten faster, more agile as the years have gone on because he was always he was always pretty big. Um so he's a unique skill set, man, that we obviously were fired up to add it to a good group right now. And um, I mean, he's not gonna be a every down on the ball tight in. I mean, I think we we know that, uh, no question. And so uh, I would imagine he's a guy will, you know, have the opportunity to move around and do some do some unique things with because from a matchup standpoint, he, you know, he's you do you know, you can go out you can go out recruiting four or five years and and not see the, you know that combination. It's a you know it's a very unique combination of uh, the skill set that he has and then on top of it you know, just a tremendous person, a great family. Um, he's, he's the kid that in the age of all these big announcements, all that, he, he drops a video and he's in, he's in the weight room with his dad and his family working out while it drops. Like we weren't even able to talk to him. Like, I mean, like, that's just him though. Like he's, he's not, not flashy, great kid. And his parents have done a great job with him and he's obviously uh, got some cool things coming up and we're glad that, you know, obviously thrilled that we get to be the ones that, that uh, get a chance to to do this next step with him. Thanks. Adam? Yeah, Lincoln, just still staying with Deuce. Like, what were the conversations with him about his potential uh, opportunities in baseball and specifically as it might relate to this summer's draft? Yeah, I mean, Deuce has big goals um, in both sports. Um and I think it there was some comfort factor there because I think it you know it matched uh, some of the other guys that we've been able to to coach, and uh, so we were able to have re very real conversations about that. And uh, I think the expectation is is you know I think there's I, I'm certainly don't pretend to be a baseball expert, but I, I think a good chance that Deuce is going to get drafted, and and very potentially a good chance that he gets drafted high. And um, I think if you know if that if that's what happens, you know I think his intention is to. Um, you know, is to sign a professional contract and then uh, play college football, you know, which, you know, he can do now. And uh, so um, if that, you know, if that does not happen, um, then I think, you know, all options are on the table in terms of potentially playing both here uh, at SC. So we'll, we'll see how it evolves. Um, but I know, I know this, I mean, there's two kind of knowns right now. I mean, one, he's going to play football at USC, um, you know, two, he, Baseball is going to help his future, um, which is obviously really exciting. And yeah, obviously there's some comfort level in the fact we've been able to do it, um, you know, with a couple of guys, including one pretty high profile guy that worked out well. And I think the ultimate goal in this is, you know, like it was for, like it was for Kyler is my hope is, is at the end of his career at USC, you know, that he's in a position where you know, he can pick, you know, and that's, that was a pretty fun spot to get, get to with the other guy and uh it's hard to do now it's really really hard to do but but you know deuce has the ability to do it and so it's been fun kind of visiting through that plan and um you know a lot of, a lot of good talks with him his family uh, a lot of people in both sports and I feel like we've got a, a tremendous plan ready to, to put out there and then then it's gonna be up to deuce to do the work from there 
Brian Garchi. Hey, Lincoln, just kind of on the same topic. I know you mentioned working with Tyler and just how that might have informed your conversation in terms of Deuce and his future with baseball. How much did that experience help just kind of working through that and how difficult just having seen him kind of do that is it to sort of keep both of those dreams alive? Uh, the the experience was, was awesome, but it was ex uh, the how valuable it is. I really can't, I'd have a hard time describing it to you, honestly, because it's so unique and, you know, there's, there's two things. I mean, like you can, you can be a head coach at a division one football program that allows a, a player to go pl try to play another sport. That's not the deal. It's, can you help facilitate and put together a plan that helps them potentially excel at both? And there is a lot to that more than, more than I, uh, more than I ever realized. And uh, I thought we, the first year with Kyler, I thought we kind of botched it to be completely honest um, in a few key areas. And, you know, I thought, you know, he didn't have a great year of baseball. He was a backup quarterback that year. Um, and then I thought we learned a lot from that year. Um, and as a staff, I think we grew, we got a, had a much better kind of idea of what we did right and what we did wrong. We made some key adjustments um, uh, kind of in the war area of, of scheduling and, rest and recovery and communication because now you know even with for, for one of these athletes there's a ton of communication that goes on because they work with so many people will now double the amount of sports right like now add a whole nother sport to the mix like it's it's just a lot it becomes almost like a full-time job and well i thought we were much more prepared the year two and then obviously you know things went pretty good on the baseball diamond he goes nine overall and then uh you know football obviously did what he did and so uh, i think having some of that experience with kyler will help us I, that we ought to be off to a much quicker start uh, with Deuce. Um, you know, probably a little bit less of a rough draft and a little bit more. Got an idea of what the finished product will look like. We'll make a few tweaks along the way uh, to fit Deuce specifically, but yeah, excited about it. And we've been able to work with uh, Andy and those guys in, in baseball already with Austin Overn. They're tremendous. Um, uh, Andy and his group of working together. So the synergy between those groups are great and we'll have a great plan for Deuce. Was it just with Kyler? Was it just a matter of maybe putting too much on his plate in that first season? You had to pull back a little bit, or what were yeah. those adjustments? You know, it's a really, that's a really, really simple way of putting it. In a way, yes, <laughs> there's a, there's a whole, there's a whole lot to it. You know, because you're, you're, you're trying to find where that line is of you're trying to train for two different sports, but you also have to recover. You also have to mentally put in the mental training. You also have to, uh, oh, oh, by the way, they're, they're going to school, right? There's, there's that. Um, you've got communication between two sets of strength coaches, two sets of academic coordinators, you know, two sets of operations, uh, two, two head coaches, two different position coaches. Like it's, there's just a lot going back and forth. And, it, you know, you, it's going to take more than the average athlete, but you got to be careful because you can go overboard or he can go overboard. And sometimes you have to protect them from that. So, we found some just small inefficiencies in what we were doing. Um, and some of that was based on feedback from him kind of when it was all over and we had all a chance to take a breath and really look back at it. But the small inefficiencies really can hurt a guy, especially because their, their schedule so tight and there's like no room for error. And so we just learned a lot from it and uh, that we were just much more efficient um, in sync. We found kind of gotten a good rhythm with him and, and, uh, and the rest is history. And Lincoln with, with Lincoln with Deuce in the fold now. Did you feel like someone at his height or with with his size was a skill a skill set or traits the receiver room needed? Yeah, you know, I think with the last two spots, uh, you know, in the high school class in terms of the offensive skill, that was, you know, that's what we wanted to, you know, wanted to attack. I mean. You know, and, and we got a little bit bigger there. Obviously, you know, Jacoby Lane uh, brings some of that. Uh, you know, certainly Deuce brings some of that. You know, Walker Lyons, when he gets here, uh, certainly brings some of that. Um, you know, we've been able to add some 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 real speed. Uh, we, we have 
we, we got some juice in that room. Um, and so, you know, you, you start to mix up the skill sets, you know, I think it, that could be a fun combination obviously to work with and we're, we're pretty pumped about it. So, um, yeah, no, I think he, he fits a need and it'd be fun to get him and Jacoby and these guys here and throw them in the mix with our guys and, and feel like, you know, we'll have a chance to put out a pretty good product, uh, in terms of our skill position. RJ. Hey, Lincoln, uh, Justin Dedrick says there's been a lot of good punch, counter punch between the offense and the defense on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm just curious, as you look at the team periods and maybe some scrimmage stuff that you've done recently, are there any kind of trends emerging, any kind of anything standing out to you about, about either side of the ball? You know, I would say both, you know, we're eight practices in. I would say both sides have had one day where they were pretty dominant um the other six have been just back and forth you know, we just finished one today and we got the scrimmage a little bit today we kind of half practice half scrimmage and um kind of went in phase that's so you know defense started strong and then offense was pretty good in the middle and then the defense won the two minute drill uh at the end of practice and so it's it's kind of been like that um it just you know it feels we're, we're a little bit stronger there's just a little bit more depth when you when you uh, when you put the twos, which we don't really even know who the twos are. But when the second wave of players goes in, you don't. There's not there's not as much of a drop off. There's just there's just more good players on the field, right? and and then some of the players that we brought back are, you know, more physically developed and a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. We just we feel a little sturdier, um, I guess, just to me as a whole, which is obviously was a goal for us, and we talked a lot about it in the off season. So. Uh, it's been extremely competitive. I mean, it's uh, um, guys go, going at it. Uh, it was good to get out and get some live today, some live tackling and some live walking and really kind of let these guys go. And, and uh, they certainly have been have, have met the challenge. So, I mean, eight practices in, we're, we're happy. We've we've been a little limited at some of the positions, and that's why we canceled. It made a uh, change practice the other day. Um you only get 15 of these. We've got our window of time, and so we'll end up doing a, a four-day practice week, obviously one of the next two weeks to make up for it. But we had just a, enough guys out in a couple of the key positions that were kind of tough to practice with. It, you don't want to you don't want to take away the practice for the other 90% of the team, but if one group can't do it, it can severely limit you. So gave our guys a chance to recover a little bit, and hopefully we'll get that practice on the back end with a few more bodies that are ready to go. But – yeah, it's been good. We're we're, we're improving. Um, guys are learning. It's uh, the back and forth that you asked about absolutely exists, and it's been very consistent. Mark. Yeah, uh, hey coach, you kind of answered my question right. I was I was about to ask it. Is that maybe when you go back to talking about the, the the recovery process, did maybe you maybe plan too much too soon, and then you had to maybe you learn something this year as well about this team where you had to take a step back, or was it just guys' bodies were just too banged up and it's like, you know what, we just have to pull back today. Yeah, just just too many nicks. I mean, we're we, you know, they're right now, I mean, we we practice. We had a couple before spring break, but really, I mean, they only practice once every two days. Now we would lift and do walkthroughs and stuff in between. So I mean they're still busy, but no, I don't think we've worn them down. But what happens is you get a couple guys out at a key position. Well now all of a sudden one you miss those guys, but now you got other guys that are having to take all of the reps, which is it's good for their development, but you then you all of a sudden don't want to put them in a position where, you know, they're taking more reps than you want. But then you've got groups like the O line and D line right now that and running backs and I would say like linebackers, like our front seven, we stayed pretty healthy through spring. We got we've got pretty good depth, but you start cutting reps to save for some of the skill guys, but then you're doing it at the disservice of those guys, the bigs, and now you're not getting those guys reps. And so it just, I think more than anything, it was just looking at the current situation, a couple of guys that are nicked up that we feel like we'll get back um, in the next like couple of days. And it's like, all right, we could practice now and, and, and kind of trudge through it. Or we could, we could put this practice back on the back end when it's likely that we're going to have, you know, five, maybe, maybe even more bodies at some key spots back and get more out of the practice. Um, so we just took advantage of the time. Obviously couldn't have done it during the season, but just taking advantage of the time we have right now. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we're going to wrap it up with Eric. Uh, hey, Lincoln, looking at the, the nickel spot, 
Um, curious when you look back at last year, what you feel like you got out of that, and then this spring, what that looks like in terms of kind of position battle and productivity, and and what's going on there. Uh, the spot last year was was inconsistent. Um, had some good moments, but we weren't productive enough at that spot. Like I, I, I feel a, about that spot kind of like we felt a little bit about inside linebacker. Like had our moments. We had some really nice plays, but we weren't consistently the presence that we needed to be. Um, and obviously, that's a, it's a super key position in our in our defense. It gets a lot of action. Those guys got to do a lot. They got to blitz. They got to be in run fits. They got to cover. Um, they just they're kind of right in the middle of the action. And so, uh, I I've been extremely impressed with both Jalen uh, and Latrell here this spring. They have. Uh, they have both taken some big, big steps. Jalen has been a, had a fantastic first half of spring, and really Latrell has too. Those are those are guys I put in the kind of the category right now with with C Air, and that they've they've just made some big improvements. They've improved their bodies. They kind of they both got to play a good amount last year. Both still relatively young guys that kind of figured out a little bit of kind of what it takes and what it's like. And they've had good off seasons and and really. You just see those two guys playing more confidence right now. They, they know, you know, they know where their help is. They, they understanding their fits better. They're, they're more committed to their coverage technique, and that's it's shown up. So, um, we need more production. I like those two guys there, and then, you know, when we get full strength in DB world, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll certainly kind of start looking at you know one other body to work there. Um, but that, those two right now are getting the primary uh, share of the reps.